Good morning, everybody. I uh, hope you're keeping well uh, and um, happy St. Patrick's Day uh, if you're celebrating that today. Um, uh, it's good to, to share with you this morning. Uh, just a reminder that tonight uh, we are uh, having our Zoom midweek and Steve Burton is going to be joining us uh, for that. We're going to have the chance to, to chat to him about how things have been for them during this whole uh, crisis <coughs> and, and just... Uh, uh, just renew fellowship uh, with with him. So we're looking forward to that tonight, half past seven. If you'd like to join us, if you don't have the code uh, for the Zoom meeting, then please do get in touch with me. We're reading this morning from Mark chapter 14 uh, and beginning at verse one. And here we are getting into the last two or three days of, of Holy Week. Uh, and we're going to take our time going through these next couple of chapters. We have two and a half weeks to go just now until Easter. Uh, and we're going to take our time in Mark 14 and 15 as we see uh, Jesus moving towards the cross and really, um, really, I guess, get to understand what is going on uh, in these passages. So we're going to read from Mark 14 uh, and 1 to 11. It was now two days before the Passover and the Feast of the Unleavened Bread. And the chief priests and the scribes were seeking how to arrest him by stealth and kill him. For they said, not during the feast, lest there be an uproar from the people. And while he was at Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, as he was reclining at table, a woman came with an alabaster flask of ointment of pure nard, very costly, and she broke the flask and poured it over his head. There were some who said to themselves indignantly, why was the ointment wasted like that? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii and given to the poor. And they scolded her. But Jesus said, leave her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has done a beautiful thing to me. For you always have the poor with you. Whenever you want, you can do good for them, but you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for burial. And truly, I say to you, wherever the gospel is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray him to them. When they heard it, they were glad and promised to give him money. And he sought an opportunity to betray him. As I said, we're entering into the final stages of Holy Week here. And Mark takes us in this passage uh, from the conspiracy to kill Jesus to a scene of extravagant devotion to then base betrayal again in just a few words. And the vital question I think that we're being asked to consider here by Mark is what does Jesus really mean to you? And the reader who's reading Mark's gospel for the first time, who's trying to figure out perhaps for themselves who Jesus really is and why he really came, Mark is challenging that reader who is Jesus to you? He could be seen as a threat to be silenced. That's how the chief priests and the scribes see him. It is time now to get rid of him, to get him out of the picture. He is undermining our authority. The conversations and the questions they've asked him at the beginning of the week uh, have only revealed uh, how empty and hollow their religion really is or their approach to religion really is and Jesus is a is an existential threat to them he threatens everything about what they do and he threatens for us our ideas about ourselves he threatens he punctures our pride he dismantles all of our attempts to be our own saviors 
to to engage in self salvation by the the good things that we do or the religious things that we do or whatever he's a threat to all of that and that makes us feel deeply uncomfortable and we need at times to let Jesus make us feel uncomfortable, to realise that he is a threat to our pride and our self-salvation and all those things. Because if we don't recognise that, then we never get beyond that to see why he's pulling those things apart and why we need to let him pull those things apart. Because it's only by having those things <coughs> pulled apart, those things on which we depend pulled apart that we will ever depend completely on him it's not easy it's painful it feels like a threat but we have to let him do that if we don't let him do it we're just rejecting him so he could be a threat to be silenced or a threat to be allowed to, to peel away all our pride and self salvation or he could be seen as a disappointment to be rejected. We know that Jesus is not an earthly king. We've, we've already heard him talk about how he came not to be served, but to serve. And we'll think more about that again on Sunday. We know that he's not going to bring us wealth or fame or power uh, on an earthly level. We know all that about him. And so we can accept that that's not the way of the kingdom and follow him in that way or we can turn to other sources of security we can turn to fame and wealth and power we can do what judas did disappointed in jesus disappointed in, in how this was all going resolving to betray him to turn to other sources of security 30 pieces of silver to uh, build his life on rather than on Jesus. So he could be a threat to be silenced, he could be a disappointment to be rejected, or he could be the centre of our lives. And that's what he was for the woman in the middle story. Worthy of total devotion. The perfume that she poured on his feet was worth a, a year's wages for an average workman. Total devotion worthy to be followed right until the end and it's really only when we understand the depth of our sin and the impossibility for us of self-salvation that we will understand the limitless reach of his grace for us and recognize that he is worthy of all of our devotion that we should offer up our whole lives to him as a gift, as an offering, in gratitude for his riches of grace that have been poured into our lives. So who is Jesus to you? Is he a threat to be silenced? Is he a disappointment to be rejected? Or is he the centre of everything for you? The one to whom you owe everything? The one who deserves your total devotion? Who is he to you? God bless.